it's so weird. Even with so few people praying for me, I still got better. Saw the cardiologist yesterday. He told me I was about as healthy as a person can hope to be two weeks after a heart attack. And I said, man, that is one mysterious way. Of course, what I lacked in prayers, I more than made up for in thoughts. I have to imagine the messages of support and well-wishing have reached into the thousands at this point. And I've read every single one of them, I think. And she said, there's so damn many ways to get in touch with me online. I can't be sure. But I think that I've read every single one of them. And instead of limiting themselves to vague offers to magically wish for me, there were a ton of offers for genuine material support. But of course, reading through all those messages meant that I also had to read the bad ones. And to be clear, they, they, they were absolutely drowning in the good ones. There were a hundred messages of heartfelt sympathy for every asshole telling me it was my own fault for getting the COVID vaccine. But those ones were still there as were a baffling number along the lines of now do you believe in God, right? Which seems grossly misplaced since, at least in their worldview, God's the one that tried to kill me and science is the one that thwarted him, right? Like, so hours after watching modern science save my fucking life, I literally got a message that read, quote, do you still worship science now, end quote. That'd be like me trying to told you so Christians in line for the pearly gates. But but I don't want to dwell on those assholes. If they're good at following instructions, they've already fucked themselves to death anyway. Instead, I want to dwell on different assholes. Specifically, a few well-meaning friends and family members who wanted to make sure that I knew that had I died, God would have let me into heaven on a technicality. The technicality? You want to know what it was? It was that I was never really an atheist to begin with. They, they wanted to make sure that I knew that despite 10 fucking years of daily proclamations to the contrary, they never really believed that I was an atheist who was going to spend eternity burning in hell as atheists deserve. I think it's fairly obvious why this is a dick move, but in case it's not clear, Let's just flip it around for a second. Imagine the roles are reversed, right? Imagine that when religious people had close brushes with death, atheists took that as an opportunity to challenge their fucking worldview. Hey, hey man, I, I can't help but notice that the universe is not acting in a loving and, and benevolent way towards you uh, at the moment. Almost as though there is no omnipotent deity looking out for you. Anyway, I just I just wanted to let you know that if you did die, there would have been no heaven to go to, and if there was enough of you left to realize it, you'd have been really disappointed you spent so much of your life worrying about what God wanted instead of what you wanted. But I'm sure you already knew that. After all, you were never really a Christian to begin with. Right? It's like you can see what's wrong now. It's like it's a total dick move. It's a well-meaning in a roundabout way kind of thing, but it's still a dick move because here's the dirty secret behind those messages. They're not for me. These people weren't trying to change my mind about anything or reassure me of anything. The whole purpose was for my loved ones to try to rescue their poisonous worldview by assuring themselves that their God would never throw me in hell, even if he explicitly says otherwise a lot. Now, I, I should point out that the people sending me this shit are your typical buffet Christians, right? They don't subscribe to any particular denomination and probably don't know the doctrinal differences between one and another. They have their idiosyncratic form of Christianity based on childhood Bible stories and intuition. But just because they've cherry picked which elements to believe in doesn't mean they believe them any less. Right. And one of the few universal truths in all of those smorgasbord forms of faith is that heaven is for us, not them. Right. Because what, what would be the point of heaven if Muslims got to go? Right. And here I am fucking up their whole thing, because unlike literally any Muslims, these people know me. Many of them have known me for decades. I mean, all but one of them were fucking members of my family. And let me tell you, when you start a charity drive that raises over a million dollars for needy families, you get the family reputation of being one of the good ones pretty quick, right? I mean, th these are all people I've been there for for their whole lives, people who know me well enough to know that if their God would send me to hell for eternity, he's not a very good God. So when a perfectly good non-Christian dies, how do you reconcile that if you're in their camp? Well, plenty of them just say that motherfucker's burning in hell sucks for them, right? There's a lot of that. 
But if that's too harsh, you can always just pretend that at the very last second, that dying person converted to Christianity in their head and managed to sneak in on the vineyard worker loophole. But of course, that doesn't work when somebody just almost dies, right? Because in that case, that person can like tell you that no, the fuck they didn't afterwards. So what's left then? Well, the escape clause du jour seems to be just ignoring that objection altogether. To just tell yourself that despite vociferous and well-reasoned arguments to the contrary, your loved one never really rejected the Holy Spirit. Yeah, sure, they may have specifically said things like, I deny the Holy Spirit, but our God can see into their heart. And inside their heart, hiding somewhere behind all the arterial plaque, presumably, is a love for Jesus that never really abated. And since God can hear that way louder than all those actual statements they made, he'd probably just chalk it up to a tantrum and waive the normal heaven requirements. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's sweet that they're willing to write me into their postmortem Jesus fanfic, but it's still a pretty egregious insult to my character, right? And to their faith. You want to espouse that shit? Well, then you have to take the whole fucking thing, bones and all. You don't get to dismiss my life's work in defense of your fairy tale. So, for the record, hey, look, if I die and God shows up and he's like, hey, you know, despite all logic, somehow I exist, and then offers me heaven, I'm going to refuse it. I wouldn't want to hang out in the house of some genocidal sociopath anyway, no matter how good the heart music was. So if you want me in your heaven, you have to imagine not just your God forgiving me, but me forgiving him. And that's a bit that I still have some say over. <laughs>